flooded in February. There were fears for the survival of rare birds at the reserve, but a disaster appeal was launched and nearly £40,000 raised. Blackburn Roses has signed Grimsby Town defender Gary Croft for a million pounds. The 22-year-old left-back was targeted by Rovers after appearing for the England under-21 team. Grimsby could get an extra three-quarters of a million if he plays for England. And a squash player from Lincolnshire is bidding for stardom in the British Open Championships with starch net mon next Monday. Mark Chandler from Lincoln is seeded eighth in the event. Now back to Mike and Krista. A three-year nightmare is over for Robert Locke, the Briton cleared of drug smuggling in Thailand. He was released from prison less than two hours ago after being held for the past three years awaiting trial. Mr Locke says he's already bought his air ticket home and he sent a message to his mother in Lincolnshire to expect him back soon. Robert Locke's co-defendant, Sandra Gregory from Sorby Bridge in West Yorkshire, was jailed for 25 years after being convicted of smuggling heroin. Here's Katie Ospock. After three long years inside a Bangkok jail, Robert Locke was woken up a short time ago by prison warders and released. He's been taken to a police cell, but he can now look forward to going home. He'll be detained there and then uh, prepared for deportation. He says uh, he's already got his ticket to go back to England. Um, he's uh, delighted uh, with, with his release. He said he's going to go home uh, as soon as possible. He's messaged... Uh, to tell his mother that uh, he'll seen her, he'll see her when, whenever, because he's obviously quite not quite sure how long it's going to take to go through the uh, various uh, procedures to get out of Thailand now. Today's news has brought overwhelming relief for Robert Locke's mother at her home in Spalding in Lincolnshire. She's long campaigned for his release and feared for his safety inside the notorious Bangkok jail where he's been held. There always seems to be a sting in the tail somewhere. It's never complete good news. I just want to see him walking through the barrier at Heathrow and out to freedom. And we'll take it from there. I don't know how he's going to be physically or mentally once the initial excitement has worn off. I think he'll have a lot of adjusting to do. Robert Logg was jointly accused with Sandra Gregory from Sorby Bridge. She was convicted of supplying heroin, which customs officials found in her possession and jailed for 25 years. While she remains in prison, Robert Locke will soon be deported and on his way home. Kelly Oscroft reporting, obviously we'll bring you pictures of what's likely to be a highly emotional reunion when he's reunited with his mother in, in Hull Beach. Yes, in our part of the world. And then we will respect their privacy, we promise you. Still to come on calendar tonight though, the community deserted by the RAF. But life goes on. And find out why Lowe Stragoni, the Yorkshire favourite, is out of the Grand National. I've tried it every day for two weeks now. And it's good. It's very good. Very good. It's extremely good. Extremely good. Oh, yeah. Two weeks and it's good. They're talking about Kellogg's All Bran. It's very high in wheat bran fiber. Make it part of your complete breakfast for two weeks and see how you feel. You should try it. I'm going to try it. Good. Kellogg's All Bran cereal. Try it for two weeks. Love it forever. It's one of the most underrated things in life. Kodak Image Magic, a great way to improve your photos. Now you can easily recompose your prints in minutes, creating lasting, precious memories. You don't even need negatives. Picture the possibilities with Kodak Image Magic. Using spades and forks can be backbreaking. Now tear through your gardening with the Garden Claw. The Garden Claw has a patented design that virtually eliminates bending and lifting. It's all very easy with your multi-purpose Garden Claw. Turn the handles and the steel tines corkscrew into all soils, even clay. It's perfect for mixing in compost and fertilizer, and it's ideal for working around plants and shrubs. Also available the Mini Claw for plant box and container gardens. Available at Focus, Fair Garden, Grove and Stephen H. Smith. Get the ultimate guide to what's on in Yorkshire. Free every Friday in the Yorkshire Post. At Northern Upholstery, everything's free for a year. 
save £378 on this sofa. Take four years free credit and pay nothing for a year. Save over £600 on this leather sofa. Take four years free credit and pay nothing for a year. Save £396 on this settee. Take four years free credit and pay nothing for a year. And there's 25% off everything in our Barclay Magna range. Don't miss this fantastic combination offer. Only at Northern Upholstery. Only until Sunday, 5 p.m. Welcome back. Now, it's almost exactly two years since the village of Scampton near Lincoln was told that its famous RAF base was to close. The gates were intended to be shut this week for the very last time. But Scampton, it seems, is the base that simply won't die. Although hundreds of staff have left, it's still a hive of activity. Now, in a moment, we're going to meet the people ensuring Scampton's past will not be forgotten. But first, Jim Greensmith has this special report on those still looking to the future. This is one of the reasons why Scampton is still alive, the world-famous Red Arrows display team. After the Ministry of Defence announced the closure of Scampton over a year ago, the Red Arrows moved from Scampton, their home for 13 years, to RAF Cranwell, further south in Lincolnshire. But the skies above Cranwell are busy with trainee pilots, so the Red Arrows still fly over Scampton on a daily basis, practicing their spectacular manoeuvres. Because the Red Arrows are here, emergency fire crews and an ambulance have to be here, just in case the worst happens. There's even a video cameraman who records the flights so Cranwell's trainees can see how the aces fly. The Red Arrows in the overhead here, they're flying the base of Cranwell, but using the airspace over Scampton. Not only are the Red Arrows here, but uh, the married quarters, which were Scampton's married quarters, are now being used uh, for Waddington personnel from the, the overspill there. Uh, I've been in the service 20 years, and this is uh, the third base since 1990 that I've been on that's closed. So uh, I do feel uh, a particular sadness watching Scampton go in this way, yes. For safety reasons, because the Red Arrows fly over Scampton, even the grass has to be mown regularly to cut down on birds nesting. Here on the other side of this airbase that just won't die, hundreds of families are living. The married quarters here at Scampton could be in use for the next 20 years or more, housing the families of service personnel based at RAF Waddington, just a few miles away. Waddington's expanding and has run out of living quarters. Although the bowling alley and swimming pool are shut, the Naffy store is staying open to serve these families. We're pleased that the NAF is staying open because there's not many other facilities on the camp and at least you can have the post office and come and get your newspapers and any bits of shopping that you don't need to get into town for. So it's a good um, amenity to have here. What's it like though living on a base that's effectively closed? Well, it's quite sad really. And of course there's the RAF Scampton Primary School. That too is staying open to cope with children whose mums and dads live on the base but work at Waddington. The school's very secure. Uh, as long as people are living here at Scampton, then we shall remain open. Our numbers have stayed fairly constant over the last few years, although they have been up and down. But we're foreseeing a, a long-term future for the school. Officially, Scampton is now closed, non-operational, even though the skies above are still crisscrossed with the smoke trails of the Red Arrows. It was into those very same skies that bombers from 617 Squadron flew on dangerous missions in World War II. Lancasters from Scampton took part in the so-called Dam Busters raids, using bouncing bombs to destroy German dams in 1943. Through this door is a unique commemoration of those wartime exploits. It's a mini-museum created by Mervyn Hallam, who's made it his life's mission to ensure that RAF Scampton is never forgotten. The top one is the Sopwith Camel, which is on the airfield round about 1917. The, sec the second one is the camp in 1917, which was all tents and wooden huts. The museum is in a tiny room at Scampton Air Base. It's filled with over 200 exhibits, including a half-size model of the bouncing bomb. This is a replica of the bouncing bomb, bomb site, what they used on the dam's raid. It's simple enough. The idea was the bombing would look through the peephole and when the towers of the dam matched the two nails, away went the bomb. There's a great deal of sadness over the closure of Scampton. 
it's very important that for the, the history of Scampton and of the uh, county that we maintain this memorabilia. It's uh, the, the generations past. Absolutely devastated because I think in the long term um, RF Scampton still got a vital role to play in the defence of this country. These are some of the Scampton heroes of yesteryear. Guy Gibson's flight log. He won the Victoria Cross for the Dambusters raid. Mervyn, keeper of Scampton's memory, intends to keep running the museum until he dies. And the latter part of that report by Martin Smith. Well, uh, Scampton's past is certainly well documented, but what about the future? Well, joining us from the base now is Councillor Jeff Burrell from Lincolnshire County Council. Thanks very much for joining us, uh, Jeff. It's a tough question for you, I know, but what do you think is the future of Scampton? Well, the base has been actively used still by the RAF for the Red Arrows, and the uh, accommodation still being used for housing. It would be nice to think that the RAF would realise that the, this is an important site and it could be kept open. A absolutely, yes. If it is. Are, Sorry, go on. If they are going to close the base, then obviously we want to redevelop it to try and um, recreate the hundreds of job losses. Yeah, the trouble is, though, Jeff, as I understand, a lot of uh, RAF bases have closed before in Lincolnshire and not been redeveloped. That's the worry about Scampton. Well, of course, this is a great worry. When you're only given two years warning that a base is going to close, when really you need, I would say, three to five to, to actively consider a use, uh, you're left with uh, a great problem. It, uh, it, it's such a great name, Scampton. I wondered if the county council might be able to do something, create some kind of impetus, to keep the Scampton name going in all its forms? Well, the County Council is working with the Tech, um, the West Lindsay District Council, Lincoln City Council, and the MOD to look at the future of the site. Now, a name to me is not as important as the job losses and the damage to Lincolnshire economy. So, in other words, uh, in five seconds, you're going to fight to keep those jobs going? Oh, we're certainly going to try and recreate the 500 job losses that we're expecting and the £11 million loss to the Lincolnshire economy. Mr that... Burrow, we must leave it there. Thanks for telling us uh, about the future, we hope, of a great name. Thank you. Good night. <laughs> Lowe Stragoni, Yorkshire's great hope in the Grand National, has been pulled out after going down with flu. It was one of the favourites at 6 to 1 and hundreds of people were due to follow him from this region to entry for the big race. He's now in his